Okay, just looking at structural unemployment, and this is the other cause of the natural rate of unemployment. So for natural rate, again, just it's the frictional unemployment plus the structural. So structural unemployment is due to the structure of the labor market. And in this case, anything that keeps wage above equilibrium will cause structural unemployment. So just a little bit on the diagram setup. You have to remember that the supply side for labor is actually the workers. So this is all taking place in the market for factors of production where the workers supply the labor, the households supply the labor. And then the demand side are, uh, are the firms on the demand side. So the firms purchase up or demand up the labor. So demand side in this market is basically the businesses, supply side the workers. Price in this market is wage, so equilibrium wage. Right now, there's no type of unemployment caused in here by, because there's no type of uh, restriction. So what happens here is that you have three reasons why a restriction could be placed in this marketplace. We'll do them in a second. But basically, the restriction puts wage above equilibrium. We did this before. When, wait, when anything price, or in this case wage, is above equilibrium, you create a surplus. The quantity supplied outweighs the quantity demanded. Well, a surplus of labor shows up as unemployment. So some type of restriction in the marketplace that keeps the structure of this wage above equilibrium will create unemployment. And then as long as this restriction is in place, like minimum wage law or unions or efficiency wages, the three causes we'll go through here in a second, as long as the wage is above equilibrium, you're going to have a long run surplus it won't go away you know what would normally happen well price would go down you go to equilibrium well something's going to prevent it from going down so in a market we're going to go through three causes now of why wage can be above equilibrium all three causes will have the same result in that they create some unemployment in your economy so minimum wage i mean that's the whole point is to keep wage above equilibrium and the farther the minimum wage law is away from equilibrium, the, the more unemployment it would cause. So that's pretty intuitive. For example, just imagine if they made minimum wage law $30 an hour. Obviously, that would create a lot of uh, unemployment in your economy because, you know, there'd be a lot of people looking for those jobs, but not too many businesses would want to hire unskilled workers for $30 an hour. So the farther you move away from the equilibrium uh, when it comes, in this case, to the minimum wage, the more unemployment it would cause. The next one, unions, that's part of the point of unionizing where workers get together and collectively bargain to get wages above the going rate. And you can see right here that a uh, typical union worker earns 20% higher wages and gets more benefits than non-unionized workers. Yeah, that's the whole point, right? The whole point is to get more than the equilibrium. Well, if you're above the equilibrium, once again, for wage, you create unemployment in that scenario. An example of this I could think of would be something like General Mills, where their unionized employees might start off at $15, $16 an hour plus benefits. Think about how many people would like to start off with those type of jobs, but how few uh, General Mills will actually hire. So the supply of labor will outweigh the demand, and you'll have some unemployment result from that. The other cause, and this is an interesting one, this is when the firm on its own pays above the uh, going rate, known as efficiency wages. And the idea is that the firms are motivated by profit, so this might actually, or must actually, increase the profitability for the firms. So the firms pay more than the going rate because the productivity of the workers is higher, and therefore they get more done, actually makes the business more money, and... Um, does contribute to some unemployment because they're paying more than whatever the equilibrium is. An example of this I can think of would be uh, the classic case with Henry Ford with his assembly line workers. So going back over 100 years ago, the going rate was about $2.50 per day. He had a real turnover problem with his workers. They would stay for a while, but they'd leave. They weren't, uh, you know, really a lot of uh, retraining, a lot of costs associated with that. So he decided that he would pay a five dollar a day wage so he doubled the wage that the typical auto worker was making his turnover problem went away um, he actually ended up with more uh, efficient workers his profits actually increased 
But think about how many people wanted to work for Henry Ford since he was paying twice what everyone else was paying. He could never hire all those people, right? So all those people are looking for, to work for Henry Ford, but he can't hire them. Uh, some of them will then be unemployed. So that's the third reason. Firms do it on their own, and usually it's to reduce, or, or you know, they pay more on their own. They're not being forced to. Usually it's to reduce worker turnover. It's to attract higher quality workers. You get healthier workers if you pay them more. They can usually afford better health and nutrition. That's more of an issue in poorer countries. And, um, you know, they're more other, they're just on task more often because they know that if they would lose the job, they're going to make less elsewhere. So the efficiency increases with the higher wage, the profitability increases, but it creates some unemployment. So there's your three causes for structural unemployment. Unions, minimum wage, efficiency wages, all three keep wages above equilibrium and contribute then to structural unemployment, which contributes to the natural rate 